Look, I didn't overpromise, and but I have probably uh, outperformed what anybody thought would happen. Can you think of any other president's done as much in one year? You guys talk about how nothing's happened. I don't think there's been much on any incoming president's plate that's been a bigger menu than the plate I had given to me. I'm not complaining. Knew that running in. And the fact of the matter is we got an awful lot done. An awful lot done. And there's more to get done. In his lengthy press conference marking one year in office, President Biden stressed that in spite of everything that's happened this year, the country has made a lot of progress. And on one hand, he's right. The Democratic Congress passed a huge stimulus bill, one that kept the economy afloat and led to a drastic reduction in poverty. The Biden administration rolled out a vaccine response that's led to six in 10 Americans being vaccinated. And Biden signed into law a job creating infrastructure bill, something he's to his disgraced predecessor, promised to do and failed. But at the same time, the strong Biden economy has been overshadowed by supply chain issues and record inflation that's led to higher prices at the retail store and the gas station, hitting poorer folks the hardest. Omicron is surging throughout the country, killing nearly 2,000 people a day and delaying a return to normalcy. And Biden hasn't been able to get Build Back Better or voting rights, with Congress stuck on stall thanks to two members of his own party. And Americans seem to be feeling the negatives much more than the positives. A new NBC News poll shows that Biden's approval rating has dropped 10 points since he first took office, down to 43 percent. It's the lowest approval rating for any president uh, at the end of his first term, except for the disgraced retiree now padding around Florida in his socks, dreaming of autocracy. President Biden is underwater on his handling of the economy, the pandemic and foreign policy. And he's lost support from key groups. The independent vote dropping 32 points since April. The black vote dropping 19 points. And the Latino vote dropping 11 points. His support among Democrats is still strong at 80 percent. But even that has fallen 10 points since April. With me now is Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg. Uh, and before we get to the tough stuff, I want to wish you a happy 40th birthday, uh, Secretary Pete. You are 10 years away from the fun years. Uh, I'm just going to let you know, uh, and your your, chi your kids will be old enough for you to actually go outside. Uh, so good luck on that one for 10, 10 more years. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> let's talk about this administration. You. You're welcome. Let's talk about this administration, which is one year old. Where do you think the cause, what do you think is the cause of the drop? Not among Republicans. They, they, were, they were already built to despise this president, no matter what he did. Um, but among like African American voters and and independents and other groups who are important um, to the you know in the base. Well, I think there's a lot of concern about the work left to be done. Uh, nobody is saying, certainly the president is not saying, uh, that we've finished the job, that uh, uh, that everything uh, that we were worried about is better. But look how much better off we are than we were a year ago. The president arrived to a deeply, frighteningly divided country. We still are, but uh, was able to deliver major legislation on a bipartisan basis with the infrastructure bill. A year ago in the economy, the president inherited an economy that was in grave, grave danger. A year later, of course, there's more to be done on the economy, uh, but we have the unemployment rate below 4%, so some people didn't think would be possible for years. The most job creation of any president in their first year ever. Child poverty, perhaps at its lowest level uh, that we've ever seen. More work to do, of course, but an extraordinary achievement in one year. You look at the public health situation a year ago. Less than 1% of this country vaccinated. Now, uh, over 200 million Americans protected, saving, I believe, millions of lives. There's more to be done, uh, especially with Omicron. But you, you look at everything that's been achieved in the last year, and we got to remember, none of that was automatic. None of that can be taken for granted. None of that would have happened no matter who, who was in that seat. Because President Biden led this country and led this administration, we got all of that done. And now the American people rightly are saying, OK, what's next? Uh, what are we going to get done now? Because there is so much more to do, so much more that this country is up against. And that's exactly why we're working even harder going into this second year of this administration to the look. Let me let me ask you this question. Do you think it was a mistake looking back? Because, you know, the the, the, the infrastructure bill um, that was passed was cleaved apart from what's now being called Build Back Better. And in a sense, it's a bill that's like a white guy employment act. Right. There's going to be a lot of working class men that are going to get employed by that bill. But that's the very cohort 
that is much more likely to reward Republicans for that. That's who they vote for. Most, you know, working class white guys vote Republican. Meanwhile, all the stuff for the women, for, you know, for, for moms, for people who need child care, for people of color that's going to affect climate, which young people really care about, you know, extending the child tax credit, all the stuff that helps families and, and women and younger people and, you know, people with college debt, all that got dropped. Do you think it was a mistake to split those bills? Well no, I, and I want to challenge the idea that this is a, a bill that only benefits one part of the population. I, I get where you're coming from and, and what you're saying, but uh, look, uh, you look at something like the investment in transit, you know, it's it's Americans of color, commuters of color who are most likely to depend on that. You look at the jobs we're going to create, and yeah, they have been traditionally white and male, but it doesn't have to stay that way. We are working at, with a lot of focus at the direction of the president to make sure that everything from the contracting opportunities for small business to the labor opportunities for workers, fixing the bridges, installing the electric vehicle charging stations are more likely to be workers of color, are more likely to be women. We're working on women in trucking. After all, if we have a trucking labor issue, not enough people behind the wheel, and 50 percent of the country is being underutilized in terms of uh, needing to call more women into that profession, we can do a lot about that. Now, I also get what you're saying. You know, we look at, at the care economy, we look at parts of the economy that do employ uh, more women right now, more workers of color, but uh, there too. I mean, I, I think we shouldn't uh, assume that it's only uh, something that means something to one part of the population. The child care uh, means an awful lot to me. I'm a guy, but it's going to mean a lot to me as a parent, uh, which is why we continue to be committed to lowering the cost of child care, lowering the cost of insulin, uh, lowering the cost of electric vehicles, something else in that Build Back Better legislation. We continue to believe in all of that. We continue to fight for all of that. I'm proud of what we got done in this transportation infrastructure bill, but no, this is exactly why we're not sitting back saying, okay, but well, we got everything done that we needed to in the first year. It's why we're working even harder to keep delivering. You know, the doomsday clock, Let, let's go to this. It's at 100 seconds to midnight. The world is stuck in an extremely dangerous moment, according to uh, this doomsday clock. It scares the hell out of me, and I'm sure it scares out of hell out of anybody that cares about the future of the planet. But again, that's the stuff that could be fixed in what's in Build Back Better, especially the climate pieces of it. Is that going to get passed, and can you get that passed, a coal baron named Joe Manchin? Well, these are good policies, which is why we're going to keep fighting for them. And uh, look, we have a responsibility, especially when it comes to climate, to future generations. Yeah, but this is no longer some far off thing. It's it's impacting current generations too. wildfires, floods, heat waves, you name it. This is not theoretical. It is upon us. But again, uh, I don't want to downplay what is already in the transportation infrastructure bill on this. I mean, transportation is the biggest part of the economy that's putting greenhouse gases in. So the funding for transit, the funding for complete streets, the funding for a carbon reduction, program that is running into billions of dollars we're going to be able to invest in that that's part of what we've already achieved even while we are working with an enormous sense of urgency to keep fighting for the things that are in that build back better vision because they're so important you didn't say you could get it past mansion though i'm gonna to have to have you come back we have to talk just specifically about that i mean you guys have literally a coal baron in your way uh it's going to be difficult but i know you got to go you have a you have short time but secretary transportation secretary pete Buttigieg, we call him secretary pete around here thank you very much have a great evening.